Good evening. I'm David Stringer. I'm a business owner, an entrepreneur, mentor, and I have a disease called golf. <laughs> so before I get started, I wanted to ask how many other golfers that have the disease out there? Show of hands. Okay, good. Yeah, I see a couple. Great. I think you're really going to connect with what I have to say tonight. Um, let me see our uh, entrepreneurs that showed up today, business owners. Okay, awesome, yeah, good, excellent. I think you're really gonna connect with what I have to share. Now, I'd like to see a show of hands to those people who could care less about golf and do not wanna be an entrepreneur. This is gonna be a tough 12 minutes. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna use golf for is a metaphor, so just use golf, to use, uh, change golf into whatever you're passionate about, right? Because it's just gonna be a metaphor for what I have to share. So, hopefully you'll like that. Uh, before I completely lose you, one last question. Who here likes making decisions? Okay, good, excellent, cool. So do I. I actually think it is uh, my superpower. Uh, I love making decisions. It is what I love the most about being a business owner, quite frankly. I love the process. I love having a problem to solve, gathering information, analyzing that information, thinking about different outcomes, and then taking a step forward, making that decision for my company, for my employees, for myself, for my family. So I just really enjoy the process. And so let me bring this all together for you. So the golf swing in golf is very much like making decisions in as a business owner. So let me compare the two for you. First, the golf swing is starts with a very static state, meaning the ball's just sitting there. It's not gonna move on its own. I have to hit it in order to advance the ball down the barrel. Same thing with the decision. It starts with a static state. Nothing happens until I make that decision to move forward. They're very much solo acts. What I mean by that is I'm the golfer. I'm the only one that's supposed to hit that ball. Same thing with being a business owner. There are certain decisions as a business owner. I'm surrounded by great managers, great employees. But they're just certain decisions that I am the only one to make. And so I relish that. Lastly, it's all part of a continuum. If I hit the golf ball now, well, how did it get here? And then when I hit it again, I'm gonna go hit it again. So playing golf is a continuous stream, a continuum of swings. Same thing with decision making. There's a decision that got me here, and now I gotta make another decision, and I'm gonna have another decision once I get to that decision. So it's all part of a continuum. And to be a golfer, and to be a business owner, is to make decisions swing the golf club endlessly, relentlessly, exhausting. So, what is a process for success if you want to have this long-term success in both golf and business, and really in life? Well, that's my bold solution. You see, I've developed a methodology that I put into place for my golf practice. In COVID, I decided, in 2020, I decided that I needed a really big, hairy ball to go out. And I had never played golf competitively. I played for about 20, 25 years. And I thought, let me rededicate myself to my game. Let me go out and compete in 2022. So I started working on my game in all of 2021. And this methodology came to me. Because if you've never tried golf, then same if you go to Top Golf. It's not easy. It's like one of the hardest, stupidest games on the planet. So it's demoralizing and it takes a lot of effort and energy to be a good golfer and to be successful. Kind of like a business owner. It's hard and it's rough sometimes. So I developed this methodology to help me in my golf game and I found that it's actually pretty translatable to making decisions as well. So let's dig into practice. I 
love this word, practice. When I was, when I was a little a tiny kid and I played baseball, I really only liked to play practice. I really could care less about games. I just want to go practice. So I love practice because it's both a noun and it's a verb. To practice something, a verb, over and over again for perfection, or hope for perfection, and then a verb, and then a noun, a practice, a practice of something, a ritual that you do to get better at something. So as I was pondering practice, I really realized that they have both, the noun and the verb, have really three of the same elements. Sacrifice, study, and repetition. Sacrifice. If I go to the golf range and I hit for two hours, I'm sacrificing something else. I'm either not watching the game, or I'm not cleaning out the garage, or tell my wife that. So I've got to become okay with sacrifice as I practice. Same thing with decision making. If I decide to uh, promote Joe to a manager, well, I'm sacrificing his good work as a staff member. So I have to deal with sacrifice, and that's got to be part of my practice. Study. If I were just to go out to the golf range, grab a club, and just start hitting golf balls, well, how do I know I'm any good at it? How do I know if I'm doing it right? How do I know if I'm actually producing the results that I'm trying to produce? So I have to study. I have to study the game. I have to understand how to hold the club, how to hit the ball, how to read the greens. This is the same thing in business. You can't just go around making a bunch of decisions. You've got to study. And so every morning when I get up, I take my cup of coffee into my study, and I read, I pray, I think, I contemplate, ponder. I let ideas and decisions ruminate and expand. I take that time for myself every single morning. I don't look at my phone. I don't look at a computer screen, I just stop and think. I've heard a lot of entrepreneurs say when they fail that they didn't do enough. And I think they probably were doing too much. They probably didn't stop and just think about the decisions they were making, the ramifications of the next decision, the next golf shot. So it's important in our practice to stop, think, and make that part of your study. And then repetition. There is no substitute for hard work. Hit as many golf balls as you can possibly hit. Hit as many putts as you possibly can hit. Hit as many chip shots as you can possibly hit. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. Repetition is how we get better. It's the same thing with business decisions. We have to have a practice and we repeat it over and over again for each decision so that we get better. In golf, we call it muscle memory. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to teach our muscles where they should be and how we should hit the golf ball. And that repetition, that muscle memory, helps us get to the next piece, which is routine. So as we repeat it over and over and over again, we start to build a routine. And routine is really important in the game of golf because there's a built-in paradox here. So I can't think about hitting the golf ball as I'm hitting the golf ball. Does that make sense? Because if I'm thinking about hitting the golf ball, I have to, well, get my feet in the right position and my head in the right position. My arms going the right way. Is my am I turning the right way? Um, I kind of start looking like Charles Barkley. <laughs> Anybody see Charles Barkley hit a golf ball? You too. You'll, you'll get the joke. So I can't think about hitting the golf ball when I hit the golf ball. Isn't that weird? The same thing with decision making. I can't think about the decision as I'm making the decision. What does that lead to? It leads to second guessing. Am I making the right decision? So being wishy-washy. Oh, maybe I should make this decision. Well, maybe I should make this decision. So our routine helps us to carry through and execute whatever it is. Either it's the golf shot or it's the decision. Now we can think about routine in another way. 
specifically when it comes to decision making, in a sort of a, another paradox. It's said that Steve Jobs wore the same outfit every day. Well, probably wasn't the same outfit every day, that would be gross, and dirty. But he wore a black top and jeans. And it's reported that he did that so that he eliminated one decision a day. Isn't that cool to think about? How much better could you be by your routine if you eliminated a mundane decision? What else could you be thinking about? That gives you space to make some big decisions. So routine is vitally important to, to moving forward. The next thing is confidence. So life is unpredictable. Uh, if you play golf, it's unpredictable. <laughs> Business, <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur, is super unpredictable. And so it's really difficult to stand anywhere, either on the golf shot or making decisions without confidence because, well, geez, what's the point? Right? If I, if I hit a beautiful shot, and it goes right into the fairway and right into a divot, which is a hole that somebody didn't fill, right? And it ruins my next shot. Well, what's the point of this game anyway? So confidence is the steel to which helps us deal with that unpredictability. We get more and more comfortable as we do our routine and as we do the practice so that, well, we hit it in the fairway, it's a beautiful shot, it fell into the divot, now I've got to hit it out of the divot. And now confidence tells me, I can hit that out of the divot and I can get it on the green. The same thing with decision making. The decisions that I was making as a young entrepreneur 20 years ago are not even close to the decisions I'm making today because I'm so much more confident. I know what I can do. I know the abilities of the people around me. I've been through them. We've been battle tested. So confidence helps us to find ways to get over that unpredictability. In the last part, and this is the tiniest in time commitment. It's the tiniest, but I think it's the toughest. It's the most difficult in the whole entire formula. And it's the one I struggled with the most as a golfer. And it's this. It's the grace that I'm gonna hit that shot. I am not a PGA professional. And so I'm gonna hit it into the woods, probably more than once. And so I have to give myself the acceptance and I have to accept whatever outcome that is so that I don't beat myself up. Because again, if I beat myself up, oh, you dummy, you put it into the woods again on this hole. If I continue to beat myself up, then what's the point of playing this stupid game? But if I give myself the grace, if I forgive myself before it even happens, and I allow that bad shot to happen, and then I recover because I'm confident, and because I have a routine, and because I practiced, if I can recover and hit the next shot better, well, then that shot in the woods is meaningless. It doesn't show up on the scorecard. So acceptance is forgiveness. It's grace for yourself. And that's the same thing with decision making. We are all human. We are going to screw things up. We are going to make bad decisions. And you're going to know, because <laughs> somebody around you is going to tell you, well, that was stupid. And that's okay. It's okay to make bad decisions. Because ultimately, the bad decisions teach you something, and then you are able to, again, build on your confidence, go through your routine, and continue to develop your practice. So my bold solution is practice builds routine. Routine builds confidence. Confidence builds acceptance. Thank you.